up nation welcome back to my channel so for today's video i'm going to be literally doing one of my most requested videos i get questions literally on the daily on people saying can you help me start a channel how do you know how do i start a channel what should be my first video so today i'm going to be sharing you guys all my tips and tricks and i'm going to be telling you guys how to start a channel and how to be successful in 2019 Okay, so real quickly, I just kind of want to give a backstory of my kind of like story and how I started YouTube and everything like that. So you guys know I had wanted to start YouTube for a really, really long time. I was really into makeup, so yada, I wanted to be like a beauty guru, all that type of stuff. But I finally started a channel and was posting in 2015. But then I was really, really insecure about it, so I ended up deleting the videos, but I still had my channel. And I had actually only gained, I think, like 81 subscribers from those few videos that I did post and I literally think it was like maybe like five it really wasn't anything crazy and they were just the bare minimum super simple like seven minute videos so later in 2018 I actually decided that I really wanted to restart my channel I had a lot more confidence in myself and I felt a lot more comfortable with starting a channel in 2018 so I decided in August of 2018 to restart up my channel so I began I guess with 81 subscribers and I grew from then to now which is July and now I have like a around 166 thousand subscribers so that is honestly if you think about it such a short period of time like it is a really long time but for YouTube people and for you to grow that much it's honestly super duper hard some people who started way before me still have less and it's honestly just a game of luck there's really no way to get a lot of subscribers or to get a lot of views it's literally just you post and hope that it gets a lot of traction so it's honestly just all luck and I happen to be really really lucky and a lot of people I think they want me to give them like a specific answer on this is how I got a 3 million viewed video you know like I don't know how it happened like it just kind of happened it was all luck so that's kind of a little bit of backstory on me and how I became where I am today and how my channel kind of grew but now I'm gonna tell you guys how to grow your channel so before you want to get into starting a channel, you need to ask yourself, why are you starting a channel? So are you starting a channel because you want to make money? Are you starting a channel because you want a creative outlet? Are you starting a channel because you think it's going to be fun? Are you starting a channel because your friends have channels? You know, you want to figure out why you're actually starting a channel because if you want to start a channel because you want money, honestly, I mean, you can do that. Yes, if you get to that point, you will make money, but to make money, the process is a long process and even when you are finally monetized your first few paychecks are not going to be high so if you do want to start a channel for money i mean you can do it but it's honestly probably going to be a very very frustrating process so me personally i wouldn't go into youtube thinking oh this is just a money thing like i'm just doing this for money because for one you're not going to enjoy it and two it's literally going to feel like a job all the time 24 7 and for me personally the reason why i love youtube so much is because it's my job as well as it doesn't feel like a job like it's still something that's very fun for me because it's something that I genuinely love to do I get questions literally all the time on what should be my first video and how do I figure out what I want to upload and different things like that so for me personally I post what I like to watch honestly literally just kind of do whatever I want I don't really restrict myself to saying oh I'm just a mukbang channel or I'm just an ASMR channel or I'm just this or I'm just that so that's honestly what works for me I just kind of post what I like to watch because if I don't like to watch my own videos how can I expect anybody else to like to watch my videos and that's the concept I like to stick behind because if I can genuinely sit there and watch my video and not get annoyed with my voice and how I look then you know I feel like it's less likely for people to feel the same way but here are some few video ideas that you guys can have as your first videos so when people ask me this question I always recommend first days of school so those are really really popular and now school's coming around it's just right around the corner so this is gonna be a great time if you do want to start your YouTube channel also school vlogs if you are in school um, do like going to school with me one day or something like that and then also get ready with me for homecoming proms dances formals anything like that people fiend off of get ready with me and then also my biggest 
tip when making videos is follow the trends so if you don't really have a big channel this is personally what helps a lot in my opinion if you want to gain subscribers you want to post videos that are on trend because they're going to get a lot of attraction so some examples of videos that are on trend were like the visco transformation the glow up transformations the eating with the person in front of me orders videos different things like that that are really 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 popular people are going to be searching up so whenever I started my YouTube channel, I used my iPhone X and I used the back camera. You can use the front camera if you guys want to see yourself, but honestly, it's really distracting for the viewer because you're going to be looking at yourself. The back camera is honestly better, better quality anyways, but if you want to get into some more advanced and or intermediate cameras, so I would say like an intermediate camera is probably like a Canon G7X Mark II or anything like that, which is what I film on, like a Sony A5, A1500, something like that. But those are like some more intermediate. I would get like an intermediate like vlogging type camera. Those are really, really good. Like the Canon G7X Mark II, which is what I have now, it's really, really good quality. And I always get compliments on it all the time. Like what camera do you use? Like the quality is so good. And it was an investment, but I honestly wasn't the most priciest investment as I could have paid a lot more if I wanted to buy a DSLR. But I have still super good quality, even some better than some DSLRs and it's for way less. So personally, for me, my camera, honestly, I feel like I don't even need to have lighting, but I have a big vanity lights that I can turn on if I do want to have lighting. But I honestly feel like my camera's so good at like auto focusing in the light that I don't really need my lights. And when I turn them on, you can't really see my colorful light. But for lighting, um, you can get like a ring light. I know a lot of beauty gurus and people like that like to have ring lights. And you can also do like softbox lightings if you want to get more fancy. And then the best one, honestly, is just natural lighting but it's very kind of like inconsistent sometimes so you might like start your video at like say like 10 in the morning and then like by 12 p.m it's a lot brighter you just have to kind of work with what you got if you're gonna use your phone i do recommend having a lighting because it's gonna help the video look a little bit better so whenever I started, I used iMovie on my iPhone. And there's a lot of videos on YouTube how to edit on your phone without even using iMovie. There's so many apps like Pocket Video, CuteCut Pro, and different things like that. And there's also ways that you can like get them for free. So I know that you can get like CuteCut Pro for free if you download it through App Valley and do that whole shooting. Eventually, I left my iPhone and I went over to a laptop iMovie. And it honestly does have so many more options. And it is very kind of limited. But if you look up on YouTube, ways to do different things people have hacks for literally everything so there's definitely hacks all over the place for iMovie and how to do this and this and this so literally the opportunities for iMovie on the laptop are endless because you can literally hack everything but for me personally I now use Final Cut Pro so Final Cut Pro is a lot more expensive so Final Cut Pro is like $300 but you pay the one time and then literally the opportunities on Final Cut Pro are so much more like I can't even begin iMovie you have to literally go in and like if you want a sound effect you have to download each sound effects but you can still use them and you can do a lot of different things but you kind of have to like go in and download them and then like find them off of YouTube and stuff like that and then insert them into iMovie but for Final Cut Pro it literally comes with everything so that's why I really really like Final Cut Pro but I would not get Final Cut Pro if you are just beginning your YouTube channel I would wait until later on down the line to see if your YouTube channel actually grows and to see you know what you want to do unless it's something that you truly Truly, truly want to invest in for yourself so with YouTube we know that copyright is a big thing so for me personally whenever I do music I just look up like non copyright music there's different pages that you can like get that off of but make sure it literally says non copyright and sometimes in the person's description if you do use it and it is non copyright sometimes they will still copyright you because you didn't read the description and put their person's like they always normally will have like a request link that is like okay this is no copyright but if you're gonna use this you need to put this in your description so make sure you always do that so they whenever they go and they see your video they can literally just check that real quick and then they won't copyright your video but there's still different ways that you can like get non copyright music so my favorite way is just to get it off of YouTube but I know that some youtubers get it off of SoundCloud so they'll just go into SoundCloud find the song that they want and then they can like message the person who made the song and say like hey I'm gonna use this for a YouTube video would you like 
be okay with that and most of the time they'll be okay with it because for one you're getting to show your viewers like a fun upbeat music and normally your viewers will like that and as well as the creator of the song is getting more like traction to their song and people are streaming it more so it's a win-win kind of for both creators so the last thing that I have to say with like basics and everything like that is you want to engage your audience. So what I've learned that helps me is to have like at the end of my videos, I have a post notification shout out that really gives your audience something to look forward to at the end of the video. So that gives them more of the reason to stick through and watch your whole video, which also helps with your view time. And when you're also engaging your audience to watch your videos a lot longer, it's going to get more traction because when YouTube sees that a lot of people are watching your videos, like your view time is pretty long, that's when they're going to put your video on the recommendation page because they're gonna see that oh a lot of people are watching your video and they're not like just clicking out of it they're actually watching it so therefore they're going to share it with a lot more people and it's gonna gain a lot more attention also whenever you're creating your thumbnails make sure your thumbnail isn't something too out there I know sometimes having a thumbnail with like eye-catching stuff is really good but also sometimes people hate like a really cluttered thumbnail so honestly just kind of have like a good balance so my number one tip is to promote your videos. This is what I was so scared of whenever I first started because I didn't really want people to know about my channel. I was just kind of scared to see how my people in my personal life would react. So I was kind of scared to promote my video, which bad on my part, but I did it anyways and it honestly helped so much. So I just reached out to some people and I was like, hey, can you shout out my video? So that was one of my biggest things. Other people posted my videos because if I'm just posting my videos, I'm just hitting the audience that follows me. But if other people are posting telling people to watch my videos it's hitting an even greater audience so I really personally recommend that is asking your friends and people who have a little bit of a not a bigger audience but a different audience to post your video and ask people to watch it and then also yourself posting it on all of your social medias and different things like that so just make sure you really really promote your videos and get them out there because without doing that nobody's gonna know that you have a YouTube channel so you really need to promote them and get them out there so that people can watch them also my biggest thing when making a channel and uploading videos be consistent me I literally would post literally every single day and then I would stop and I feel like it wasn't honestly for me pretty bad but I know if you literally don't film enough and you're only posting like once a month that's not gonna help you at all especially in the beginning of your journey I know it helped me it was to post every single day because there was something for people to watch like every single day it was almost kind of like daily vlogging but not a vlog it was like an actual sit down video so that's what helped me it was to be consistent consistent and post every single day but you don't have to post every single day just be consistent also a filming schedule is honestly really really good it, it's better for you for one and then for two it's better for your audience because they know like oh, okay on Wednesday at six o'clock I'm gonna go and watch Savannah's video so it gives your subscribers a like kind of like a schedule so they can go and know that you're going to post at this and this time so they can be waiting for your video as well as it helps you to kind of just like organize your life and you're not always just like oh should I film a video today da, 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 da. like you always know when you're gonna film when you're gonna post when you're gonna edit and different things like that my first tip is to download the creator studio app I don't know if a lot of people know about this but that's how I actually upload my thumbnails it also tells you like your analytics your audiences how much money you're making your view times literally everything like that so I really really like the creator studio app because it's really really hands-on and you get to really be like watching your channel and watching your analytics so you know how you're doing and if you're doing bad or if you're doing good and different things like that so download that app it's really really useful do not have too long of an intro I I know sometimes I'm guilty of this but if you have a super long intro and you talk too much before your actual content a lot of people are gonna be irritated and just want to click off the video so I just recommend to not have a super long intro I would honestly probably recommend having either less than a minute or a minute intro yeah just stay to like a kind of short quick simple straight to the point intro so then once you get into your video that's when you can explain more and talk more and people will be more interested later on another tip is to have background music I know with copyright a lot of people don't want to have background music because they're scared that you're gonna get copyrighted but honestly I feel like it engages the audience a little bit better and it's not as boring for the audience to watch another tip is to do not over edit I literally I love videos to edit I love Daniel Perkins but sometimes people over edit and you guys know what I mean like some people over edit and it's really really irritating and it's like really honestly like a headache to watch so don't over edit but have like good edits to where like it's entertaining to watch but not like where it's like jump 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 you know what i'm saying 
so yeah just don't over edit also have a planner so i have this little book like right here i like this is like kind of how i planned out this video but also not only do i plan out my videos sometimes but i also have like a checklist of like video ideas that i want to do so i like to have like a journal or like a notebook or anything like that where i can jot down video ideas that i want to do goals that i have for my channel um but you know there's just endless things that you can do with a planner in your youtube channel and i honestly think it's better if you do have one so yeah i'm pretty sure i covered everything i hope you guys liked this video if you did give it a thumbs up and also do not forget to hit the subscribe button down below to become part of the hashtag Stab nation and don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you can be notified whenever i post um i think well actually it's gonna go up before this but i'm posting my senior parking spot video so you guys should please go watch that for me i worked really really hard on my senior parking spot and it's dedicated to you guys so definitely go watch that video and support so this video's post notification shout out goes to grace camille so thank you so much for watching my videos it means a lot and thank you so much for having your post notifications on and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video bye